when you hear the expression, you need to see it to believe it. Well, I believe the kids need to live it to believe it. So if they can try and live a situation, they're going to inquire more. You know, they want to learn, they see it, oh, wow, that's great. And they want to go more, and they want to go further, they want to go further, they keep asking more questions. And now this simple question or simple research has now become into this whole good big process that everyone's working together and helping each other, trying to find questions. And then you have students working together and sharing with their peers. And then you have that switch where instead of the teacher just teaching this, you have students excited. And, oh, did you hear about this? I just read about that. Oh, and I get, Mademoiselle, have you seen this on the internet? And I learned this yesterday. And, oh, can I show the you know students in the class's website? And so to me, that is the inquiry of getting them excited and wanting to find more. And simple question turned into them, some of them going home for 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes on the internet. And the parents are always telling me, you know, my you know, son or daughter is always coming home. They're always looking on the internet, the social studies. They go home looking. <laughs> they want to read in the newspaper because something was mentioned in the class about, say, you know, the, you know, the elections right now or things going on with the economy. And they want to know more. They just want to know. It's like, it's just so inspiring that you just want to, you know, oh, open it up and just try and get them as most informed and asking the most, the most questions they possibly can. I think it starts off with my energy. I definitely think that just positive energy of wanting to learn and be excited is, I think, what started it off. We're very lucky this year, grade six government, we had an election. And already right off the bat, I tried to get them in those roles, that kind of role play. You know, I had them, um, I had actually did a kind of vote just to see, you know, I guess what they felt, you know, was uh, you know for political parties and stuff, and who they go for. And I saw, you know, there's, you know, the sort of separation and where the students kind of felt. And I thought, hmm, but that's just, you know, is that their own knowledge, or is that because of maybe their parents or their grandparents of what they've heard? And I want them to start thinking about themselves, like for themselves, and asking their own questions and finding things out for themselves. So I started right off the bat with um, actually splitting them up, and so. If if students were for a certain party, I made them go for a different party, and they actually did a presentation on their party, and they took on that role play. And a lot of them did videos, commercials, as if they ha had become Harper or Jack Layton, and it was incredible, because they really went and learned what was that party all about, what did that party represent. So they did their presentations, um, and then I let them return back to the party that they sort of originally had chosen, um, but people had switched. I wanted my kids to go on a trip. So one day I said, okay, mes amis, my grade sixes, you know, let's go on a vacation. Okay, here's a list of countries. And this is a list of countries that all live under a dollar to two dollars a day. I said, I want you guys to pick one of these countries. I want you guys to now become citizens of that country. I want you to tell me. And I kind of, you know, I gave them the outline of what is the education system there like? What do they eat there? What are the houses like? What is their government? You know, um, what is their economic status or political status, you know, what are some of the, um, the maladies, like some of the um, sicknesses, thank you, sicknesses um, that, you know, arise there and why? Why is this all occurring? You know, why in some of these democratic countries is it not like Canada? And, you know, it was a, a hardcore two-week research session. Uh, we're in March, this started in January, and we're still going. Everything we do is always tied into, is that justice? Compare that to this country. And it's just amazing to watch these students just transform. And when it came to our social justice fair at the end of January, they were dressed up. They had costumes. And even some of the students that say, well, I don't have a costume. I said, well, look in your own wardrobe and compare what they wear to what you have. So they found some ratty old t-shirts or some, you know, beige shorts, and they got them a little bit dirty. And they all really tried to, you know, portray that. And every, you know, invited the whole school, people from the community, and they all said, wow, mademoiselle, like, your students, you would believe they live there. And they really felt it. And afterwards, they wrote Dear Diaries. I had a couple write poems, and I was in tears. To see that connection that my students made was just, and I get teared up to even think about it, mm -hmm. because it's amazing to see those words, and, you know, and they just, they really believe it. And that's it, the most important thing. They believe it now, and now we can come back and we can mm -hmm. look at our Canadian government and, and how it was too, and how Canada was not always like this, you know, and, and all the hard work and being active citizens, people that were active to make Canada like this. Big thing in grade six, you know, is controversial issues. And at first, my students were like, what does controversial mean? So we started talking, and some of the students that understood it started 
picking up issues. And this is where we have a lot of our debates, is the controversial issues. And looking at both sides of the story. Same thing in, in when you're voting. You, you, you know, you need to look at everybody's point of view, you know, before you, to make that decision like that I'm trying to show my students. You know, think for yourselves. Why do you think this or that? But and it's also looking at both sides. So you want to have two or three strong arguments for the for and two or three strong arguments for the against. Because you need to be able to back up your opinion. You can't just say, well, I believe this because. Well, why? If there's no why, you know, your argument kind of falls a little bit loose. And with the Mark Parliament, it really created that. Because sometimes the students didn't know which side. And I like to do argue, debates like that. All right, les amis. OK, do three arguments for, three arguments for against, and I'll just pick names out of a hat, and they just go to the sides. And I have some real you know, like students that are really, they just, they just want to win. So it's like, well, if you, if you want to win, you've got to have your strong arguments. And um, I also have a sheet where they write, these are my three arguments. These are the arguments that people might say against my arguments. So they're prepared for what someone might say against them. So it's just really thinking at the whole understanding what, you know, what their reasoning is. So I guess the top three would be, you know, the letting the, the kids step up, um, going on the journey together, and um, I guess making that communication with the video conferencing, I, or have speakers in. Um, well, I guess the fourth one would be the debating. Like you, you've got to have debates, you know, because of the, you know controversial issues. It's really important for them to analyze both sides of the situation.